Hi everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I show you how to onboard FTDV 7.3.0 managed by FDM, right, the Firewall Device Manager onto Cisco Defense Orchestrator or CDO. It is a centralized management solution that Cisco provides hosted in the cloud to manage your firewall devices. Okay, now let's hop over to take a look at how the setup will look like. In my environment, I have, uh, as usual, in like a few of my tutorial, a IP table as the first tier firewall, and then I have my FTD V right set up behind that IP table. So a couple of uh, prerequisites. CDO requires port 443 to be open to manage the FTD V or FDM behind the uh, in your premise. So you need to allow port 443 if you are configuring two tier firewall like myself to reach the firewall in your internal network, which I've already done. Uh, we will use the outside management interface. I will configure FDM to allow management from the outside interface. Or CDO to onboard the FDM or the firewall onto uh, the cloud management. The IP address I've configured uh, for the outside IP is 10.16.1.66 and inside is 10.16.2.66 and then the management IP is 10.16.2.166. Right. For those of you who have are well, not familiar with how FDM works, you can check out my previous tutorial on how to configure the FDM. Okay. Okay, now let's hop over to the FDM. Right, this is also your file device manager. Let's log in. You can see that the configuration, uh, the basic configuration is done. So let's take a look at the interfaces. Uh, I have um, configured the outside interface with 10.16.166 as shown in the diagram earlier and then the internal interface is 10.16.2.66, right? Okay, so first thing you want to do is to go to device over here. Then go over to management access on the data interface, click on data interface and then create data interface, right? So we're going to select outside and then you need to specify the allow network. Uh, you can restrict access so you can make it a little bit more secure. Uh, but for this tutorial, we're going to allow any network to access the uh, FDM. Now, if you're going to add CDO or add FDM to CDO, you need to allow the IP address of uh, CDO to access the uh, management interface. You can easily go and look up for CDO uh, Cisco CDO APJC IP address. Okay, you can come over to the link and it will tell you the IP address. Yep, and here it is. You can see the IP addresses of the CDO. Uh, so if you are going to, like me, uh, use it for APJC then you will need to make sure that you allow the following IP address to access your FDM. Okay, so, but for this tutorial, we're going to do any. And then let's just deploy the configuration. Okay, so once that is done, right, um, pretty much all that you need to do on the FDM side. Next, uh, let's hop over to my CD. I've already logged into my CDO account and you can see that I've already had uh, 
couple of uh, FDM already or FTD enrolled using Cloud FMC. But uh, what you want to do over here is to go to onboard after you log in. Right, you can actually add different kind of firewall uh, and even Meraki appliance dual and umbrella admin panel into CDO. So for this tutorial, we're doing FDM. So you can see there's two ways to onboard the firewall threat defense. Uh, FTD is recommended because it will get managed by Cloud FMC. Uh, there are slight nuances there. Uh, I will share a little bit more when we do the FTD onboarding. But for now, we are going to onboard FDM. So choose FDM over here. There are three ways to uh, onboard FTD. Now, if you have appliances, you know you can actually use the low touch provisioning using serial number and uh, allow DHCP to your outside interface. Once the internet connection is established, you can then key in the serial number and onboard this without going into the uh, command line to configure the uh, the FTD, right? But uh, since we have already configured FDM, we will use the registration key. Uh, you can use uh, basic credential as well, uh, but you know, uh, I find the registration key a lot uh, easier uh, and less problematic, I believe. <coughs> so click on use registration key, give it a name, FTDV 730 demo for using CDO. Let's click next. Right, so you can perform immediate security update, which is recommended. And then just need to copy the registration key. Click on next. Now, if you have already smart license, you can activate it uh, for us or for me, it's a trial. So I'm not going to activate it right now. Click on skip. And then you can go back to inventory on the CDO side. Now, once that is done, uh, let's hop back to the FDM. So go back to device and then head over to cloud service over here. Right, and then click on register. Okay, you can use uh, smart licensing or CDO. I'm going to use CDO for this. Select the region, paste in the registration key, and then click register click accept okay, it will take a while let's head back to the device overview you can see that you know a process is happening to uh, onboard the FDM into CDO now let's hop over to my CDO Right, so now that we are back in CDO, we can just refresh this. You can see that uh, CDO services are not enabled. Please visit your device. Okay, it will take some time, uh, probably between 5 to 10 minutes to get the registration work done. You can come over to the workflow and look at the status as it uh, tries to enroll as well. Right? It will give you a, a more detail of where we are. So let's... Uh, Right. Oh, let's see what is happening. Let's click on register again. Okay, it's actually connected. Right, it's connected right now. Uh, you can, once you see that this is uh, connected, let's uh, head back to CDO. Okay, if we do a refresh, we should see that. Uh, it's trying to read the device information, right? You can see that it's reading, it has successfully read the device information, which is great. So if we go back to inventory, you can see here uh, that it is still registered offline. Uh, it will take a while. So I'm gonna pause the video and come back when the registration completes. Okay, uh, once you see that 
the onboarding is done, you will see this uh, connectivity change to locating and then it is syncing the configuration. It will still take a while for the uh, synchronization to complete and you, over at the workflow you will see that we will, we will have completed the device registration. Right now we are doing the security updates. Right, The security updates does take a little bit longer depending on the versions and uh, when was the last time the uh, updates was done through the FDM as well. Right, so we'll let it complete its synchronization. Likewise, you can come over here and see where it, the status is, right? It's checking for updates before uh, checking the security update status. You can refresh it easily. Wait for check security updates, right? So it will take a while for it to complete. Uh, pause the video for a short while and then come back when this is done. Okay, let's check the status by doing a quick refresh. Right, you can see that it takes uh, a while. Still refreshing. Five minutes. Let's go back. Um, I right, can see that uh, get deployment ID on unrepeatable state changes. Let's see the different. You can see that it's progressing. Okay, enough of the details. We can go back to the inventory. You can see that it has. Um, it's now online, right? And then it's doing the synchronization. Let's give it a couple more minutes. Okay, should be done by now. Let's do a refresh and you can see that the synchronization has completed. You will see that the device is sync, right? You can check for any changes. Uh, and you will see that the security database is also updated and it will update weekly on Monday at 2 a.m. you can change all this configuration but more importantly you will see that uh, over at the console uh, right side of the panel you can now configure all the various configuration from here or you could actually come over to policies for FDM to you know uh, look at your FDM policies Right, you can go in. And you can see that the interface is similar to what you see on the uh, FDM itself. You have your access control, your security intelligence, your identity, SSL encryption and packet. Uh, the only the other thing that um, you can look at is also the FDM rule set. Right, right now there is any rules that are specified you can create a custom rule set the objects are there okay so go back to inventory so right now for me I have three you know uh, as you have more devices you can actually quickly come over to the inventory and then do the uh, configuration from here as well right so you can come over to the net uh, components and do your net configuration i have a couple of configuration that is done previously so that's how easy and quick you can onboard your fdm into cisco defense orchestrator uh, it's a good place to manage uh, multiple devices so for customers uh, who has more than you know one two three devices is a great way to manage your multiple sites and environment using Cisco Defense Orchestrator. Now, the difference between Cisco Defense Orchestrator managing FDM is that uh, you will still be allowed or you, are, you will still be able to manage the FDM or the FTD from using FDM from the device itself, right? So that's the uh, 
one of the nuances, right? Uh, but there are a lot of capability that uh, using Cloud FMC, uh, that you can use Cloud FMC to manage uh, FTD will not be available in FDM, right? So FDM is useful for small setup, right? CDO managing FDM is good for small setup, but if your setup starts to grow uh, and you want to have a better control of uh, centralized managing multiple devices with uh, a base set of policies, then Cloud FMC is the way to go. Uh, in the next tutorial, I'll share with you how do you onboard the FTD to Cloud FMC. Okay, thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next tutorial.